Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 11th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawk Watch. There was a lot of anticipation that today would be a good day with the southerly winds, so I got out bright and early, right around 7 a.m., and started out by doing some lake watching, and it was a nice calm morning with those light southerly winds, and there were a lot of ducks down on the water. The highlight was a Eurasian green-winged teal, also called a common teal, that Matt Brown picked out shortly after he arrived. And here's my very poor digiscope shot of it. Um, and you can see that the Eurasian green-winged teal have a horizontal white stripe here, kind of where the side meets the back, whereas the standard American green-winged teal would have a vertical white stripe closer to the front of the bird. It was another big day for snow geese with a lot of flocks, especially in the morning, but also towards the end of the day as well. And I estimated around 15,000 again today. It was a beautiful day for the hawk watch. The wind started out light to moderate from the southeast. And then as the morning went on, shifted south, eventually southwest. And then by the early afternoon, the winds had shifted to straight west and the temperature was rising until the midday and I actually went in to grab my lunch at one point and took off a layer and then from there on the temperature just dropped. So by the end of the day, I was wishing I had kept that layer on, um, but it was a really good day of hawk watching with the sunshine and that beautiful snow cover. It really helped to illuminate the underside of the birds as you'll see in my photos. With the warm southerly winds, we had a lot of first of season birds today. Here we have a pine siskin. And not too long after that, we had our first purple finch of the season. Another first of season was this male belted kingfisher. And that Eurasian green winged teal was spotted again, so everyone ran over to try to see it, but I think it had actually flown by the time they all got over there. Here we have a rough legged hawk. Notice those dark squares here in the carpal area. And this looks like it's probably an adult male. We see the dark trailing edge to the wings, which indicates adult. And we see multiple tail bands and the bibbed appearance, which indicates adult male. We had our first swallows of the season today with two tree swallows. Here's a photo of an adult red-shouldered hawk that is just stunning. And again, you only get these kind of photos when there's snow on the ground that's reflecting the sunlight back up. So today was a great day for photography and I got some of the best photos I've ever gotten of red shoulders and red tails. And the turkey vultures didn't look too bad either. And this was the first big day for turkey vultures. We had 115 total. Here's a male Northern Harrier that was high overhead. Here we have an adult Cooper's hawk. Notice that flying cross shape with large head and wings held out straight and a long tail. And we can see that those outer tail feathers are shorter here as they tuck underneath than the central tail feather. So if a fan of the tail, it would have more of a rounded appearance to the tip. Compare that to this bird, which is an adult sharp shinned hawk. And it just has a more compact shape overall. We see a very small head and we see a very squared off tip to the tail because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk, and this one is sort of typical of what we would expect of red tails. It's moderately heavily marked. You can see a belly band, you can see dark patagial bars, and the adults, of course, have that dark trailing edge to the wings, and a red tail, maybe with a little bit of a band here near the tip of the tail. Now compare that to this red-tailed hawk, which is on the extreme pale end of the spectrum that we might see and some have even suggested that instead of the normal eastern subspecies, that this may actually be the criders subspecies, which are known for being extremely pale for this. But you can see on this bird, it has just the faintest hint of a belly band, has kind of pale and a little bit rufousy uh, patagial bars and kind of a pale tail as well. And the head markings are a bit pale as well and just an extremely white throat. And here's the upper side of the same bird, and you can see some white here to the back and maybe some at the base of the tail as well. So I'm going to try to get some more opinions to figure out if this actually is a criders or if it's just a very pale eastern red-tailed hawk, but very cool bird either way. Here's another very unique looking red-tailed hawk, just has very bold markings. Maybe the belly band isn't so heavy, it looks normal, but very dark and wide patagial bars, a very dark and wide trailing edge to the wings. And if you look at the tail, it has a lot of banding to it, which is a little unusual for our typical Eastern red-tailed hawks. So I'm also going to get opinions about this bird. 
Here we have a small falcon. We see those pointed wings and we see a lot of dark streaking to the underside and we see a dark tail with some white bands to it. This is a merlin. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk that just looks stunning in that beautiful light. Here we have an immature bald eagle that's going through its second winter. And if you look at the wing, you can see that these longer feathers here that are more faded are retained juvenile feathers. And then all the other ones that are a little shorter and more rounded at the tip and darker are ones that have already been replaced one time. Here's an adult female northern harrier that looped around to check out what we were doing. And we know it's an adult female because of all of this heavy streaking to the underside of the body. After the hawk watch, Dave Wheeler and I decided to do some lake watching since there were westerly winds, and those are the best winds to do some lake watching at Derby Hill, especially in November, but in the spring as well as it concentrates the birds to the southeast corner of the lake. And we were rewarded for our efforts with this lesser black-backed gall, which is a relatively difficult species to get during the hawk watch. Taking a look at the eBird checklist, today we had 72 species, so by far the most of any day so far this season. And eight of those species were new for the season. Those were Cackling Goose, Northern Shoveler, Lesser Black-backed Gall, Belted Kingfisher, Tree Swallow, Purple Finch, Pine Siskin, and Eastern Meadowlark for a total of 82 species so far this season. And taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 115 turkey vultures, 17 bald eagles, 5 northern harriers, 5 sharp-shinned hawks, 15 cooper's hawks. For beauties, we had 25 red-shouldered hawks, 50 red-tailed hawks, and 5 rough-legged hawks. We had 3 golden eagles. And for falcons, we had 1 American kestrel and 2 merlins for a total of 243 migrating raptors. That more than doubled our season total, bringing us to a total of 461 migrating raptors. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy and cold with a high of only 35 and light north-northeast winds. So I will plan to be at the south lookout and I wouldn't expect much to be migrating on those unfavorable winds. Maybe we'll get a little bit, but not a big push like we had today for sure. For Thursday, it's looking cloudy with a high in the upper 40s and light southeasterly winds. So that's a good wind direction, but it's fairly light and it'll be cloudy. So it might take a little bit for the action to get going, but Thursday could end up being an all right day. And then looking ahead to Friday, mostly cloudy with a high in the upper 50s, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So those are great winds and I would expect Friday to be another really good day. And then looking ahead, I think Saturday is still looking good. Winds are good also for Sunday, but it's looking rainy. So we'll keep an eye on those days as we get closer to the weekend. All right, what a great day of birding. I got out early and there was a lot of people who came to visit the Hawk Watch today. We had big flights in the morning. There were lots of ducks on the water. There were tons of snow geese and Canada geese migrating and crows and red-winged blackbirds. And we had a bunch of first of season species and it just felt like especially through the morning that no matter where you looked that there was something happening and something going by it slowed down a little bit in the afternoon but in the morning we had a lot of great photo opportunities and for all the great photos that i showed in this video i could have shown twice as many so definitely check out the ebird list if you want to see all of the photos from the day i got a lot of photos of red-tailed hawks and there's a lot of variation in them so it's kind of cool to look through those so just don't have enough hours in the day to fully show everything that I'd like to. And I don't want these videos to be 30 minutes long either, but you can check out the eBird list if you'd like to see all of the photos from the day. And with some southerly winds coming up after tomorrow, tomorrow is a bit of a rest day for me, hopefully keep it shorter and then we'll be well recovered for the big flights coming later in the week and into the weekend. So hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.